For nearly 18 years, this original world of Fancy Pants Adventures has been updated, tweaked, released, remade, and re-released just so many times. The Fancy Pants Adventures Classic Pack has now officially released, which offers a brand new way to play that original world one. Taking the original game as you know it, providing full screen 60 frames per second widescreen support with much of the code rewritten done in a way so it will feel like that original game, as well as all sorts of other bells and whistles. I'm gonna play through these different versions one at a time and try to highlight what's changed along the way. There's an archive of test levels, unused content and animations all relating to the Fancy Pants adventures. Doing a video on all of that missing and lost content on the whole series one day could be a lot of fun, but for now looking at early unused things from World 1. We have this simple animation from way back when, titled Stick Figure. Brad had recently gotten a Wacom drawing tablet and was just kind of playing around with things. But with the stick figure body and pretty great pants, nothing totally fancy yet, we appear to be seeing the very first incarnation of the character. The ground test, not a lot to it, barely anything really, not even a fancy pants or man of any kind to be found here. Pretty smooth collisions and pretty floaty gravity. We then have what is seemingly the very first version of the actual game. Minus a fancy hairdo to go along with it. And the legs do much more of a Sonic the Hedgehog spinning circle when they get going. But in many ways you can see the design and layout is precisely what we ended up getting with the eventual World 1. Although this big scripted run doesn't quite work as intended. The spiders look kind of like aliens, I guess? I love that even the different doorways and access points are already all available in all the familiar places. You just spent all that time building a test level? Why not sketch over it and use that as your starting point? The end. For now. Little did Brad know when he wrote that sentence how much was left to come. There's a secret level available from this time that again doesn't have any proper fancy hair and is just kind of some additional platforms to run around in and test things on. There is then a test level that has a properly colored in main character with hair included. And again, there's just not really much to see or do in this version of things, except for right here on the spring just temporarily bald again. There's a bit of a disconnect between the separate levels of World 1, both in scale and style, and that becomes much more clear, realizing that the foundations of that game was Brad stitching together several tests he had run. If you're a big Flash game enthusiast like myself, perhaps you also played the William and Sly games way back in, a gorgeous pair of Flash gaming platformers. Those can be played for free over on Steam right now, they haven't been updated much, but it's still kind of the definitive way to play them nowadays. And coming this spring is a full 3D sequel being made by the series original creator. There is a demo available for that now, please consider checking that out over on Steam and adding it to your wish list. I don't want to ramble on too long. Let's get back to fancy pants. And we have the beta 0.79, the first version of things we could properly refer to as World 1. The funniest thing is probably the placeholders, like picking up the squiggles being coins from Mario or entering the door being a pipe sound effect. There's also this sign here that doesn't appear to exist in any other version of the game. We have an early sketched out version of the mouse enemy, and hey, you can actually start accessing later levels in the world. There's also this developer tool spirit mode that can be activated that lets you take on this meditative pose while you fly around the screen in search of other hidden little details. There's text kinda off to the side here with mention of the box creature. I don't want box creature to eat my pants. 
And from here, we've crossed over into the first 1.0 proper publicly released version of things. I actually find it really interesting how the pants are shaded during the idle animation. This is the only place where that shading exists, so I think the idea was just fully abandoned. That's a lot of extra work when you're doing everything frame by frame. The Do Not Enter has a sword and a stone, which when accessed would take you to armor games. There are four key colors you can change your pants to, and even the collectible trophies were in place. Here's the fancy pants we all know and love, starting to actually take shape and look a little bit familiar. Feels good to see some of those little things tightened up and working the way we remember them. Playing them back to back, it's much more apparent the way things like these little jumps and ramps were very slightly moved around to ensure that the spacing and timing of them was all pixel perfect. What the hell? That's like the first time I've ever missed that jump. I don't even know if I knew you could. <laughs> There's some slight choppiness to it, but by and large, this is the fancy pants I remember growing up playing. It's quite comical how sparse these individual levels feel nowadays. Calling them levels even feels generous. Like something like that is more or less just an individual screen to play around in. But it all had to start somewhere. And considering almost every Flash game platformer before then looked like this, what Fancy Pants was doing was just so far above the rest of what was happening in the browser space at the time. I mean, heck, this rivaled a lot of console games in terms of that precision, momentum, and general game feel running around. Moving platforms, ooh. This level really has even less to show overall. The main thing is just being able to access this very specific bonus level. Oh yeah, look at that perfectly timed jump. That mouse didn't know what hit him. What hit him was my fancy shoes at the bottom of my fancy pants. Oh, the shame of blowing the sequence and <laughs> not really being able to pick it back up. Ah, that'll show him. Can't forget to do a little drop down here for one more trophy. So level three is probably my least favorite, and I think in general people's least favorite because it just kind of offers the least opportunity for freeform platforming. It's just a lot of flat ground. But I do love it for introducing this little point where you basically can't avoid whacking your head on the roof. It's just pretty funny. And of course, there's the simple angry penguin boss. Very easy to deal with overall. Managed to grab every trophy. These are from other Flash devs and friends of Brad's, mostly from around Newgrounds. Genuinely a more complete experience than I expected it to be. Then followed up by 1.7. I don't actually know precisely when this update first went live. I believe this was from 2008, but it's advertising the console version of things which came in 2010, so somewhere around then. World 2 would have also released, so now there's a door that would open a link to go play that. And while World 2 is also being remastered and redone for the classic pack, we're launching with more of a work in progress build. There's a lot of bugs to fix there, so I'm really focusing on World 1 for now. This menu has changed, there's now fewer options, trophies has been changed to collectibles. I believe this version carries a lot of bug fixes as well, and was generally designed to bring this world closer in line with what was achieved through World 2. And in general, there's just more polish in the animation. There's no longer the shaded pants, things have generally been made smoother, with more consistent line thicknesses and placements. There's now a combo counter on enemies. While the original 1.0 version of things has some rough edges and doesn't hold up all that well compared to what's come after, I'm actually surprised to see how complete it already feels. 
And I think most developers out there would have just understood that, yeah, they've gotten better at developing with time and it doesn't really hold a candle anymore, but there's not all that much reason to go back to it. No, not Brad Bourne, that's not how he works. He'll just continue updating these games indefinitely, perhaps? At least based on the current track record of 18 years, that seems to be his plan. And while I am mostly kidding around, that is sincerely the reason why we decided to do early access for the Classic Pack. It's hard to stake out an endpoint and call things done when he's so frequently revisited these games throughout their life. So smoother animation, smoother engine, less bugs. Those are really the main differences here. In 2011, The Fancy Pants Adventures was released for Xbox Live Arcade and the PlayStation Network. This was actually developed by EA 2D and Over the Top Games. And to the best of my understanding, they still hold the rights. But with the Xbox Live Arcade shutting down, seemingly this July will be your last opportunity to pick up these games. So if you want to own this version and have access to all the unique special features, especially that local multiplayer, then definitely go check that out before it's gone forever. But because this was a different development team making their own assets and their own code, what is present in this is not available to us to add to the classic pack. But I still want to check things out and see how it differed. It'd be really interesting to see what someone other than Brad Bourne did with World 1, as other than this, it has exclusively been him making these games all this time. Luckily, a 360 is one of the few consoles I actually own. Back in my college days, my old roommate accidentally <laughs> ruined a pair of rubber boots of mine by throwing his throwing knives into them. It was an accident, and years later, he repaid me by just giving me his Xbox. This is like the second time I've ever busted it out. I dusted off some console recording gear I haven't touched in probably five plus years. And now here we are. How you're eased into the game is very different, and technically you start with World 3, which at the time wouldn't have even been known as World 3, because that only came after when Brad effectively demade this game into a Flash title again. And I really like this entire setup that takes place between worlds. There's this household hub that you can explore. There is the ability to equip all sorts of goofy hats, change your pants color, try out different weapons. World 1 is available to you after you've collected 10 stars hidden around the various levels. It was pretty easy to find the bare minimum needed. We have this level select screen that's obviously different than anything we've seen before. Oh, look at that. I love the very Tim Burton-esque Nightmare Before Christmas swirly mountain going on in the background there. The spring! What are you doing up there? And a completely different little loop-de-loop, -loop, no spiders hanging out there, Brad's name is still written in the ground. And this is all nice and familiar. It's very interesting seeing the very slight ways in which things were modified. It looks like it was expanded upwards. I've, I've never seen any of this stuff. This is totally new for me. That's a fun little bowl to roll around in. We got these springs that I don't think go anywhere. They're just fun to mess around in. Oh, there's a time trial with that actually, so I better go try to actually pull that off. Ah, no, no, no. I nearly missed it, nearly missed my chance. Okay, right on. That's a fun little addition. I like rolling around in these little bowls. It's like skateboarding, but without the board. Better test what's further off in this direction. A bunch of spideys hanging out up in this platform. More springs to sproing around on. Lots of uh, verticality to this level that wouldn't exist previously. That platform is the same. That's always been there. Racing across. Oh, the box is hidden all the way over here. Of course, I almost forgot about the box. Usual ring-shaped level made slightly different. Now there's a ring within a ring. Got kind of this uh, donut flow going on. Struggling, <laughs> struggling to get the timing of that just right. There we go. Now, now I got them all. And that drops you back down to that familiar point. Okay. Is that everything new? Ah, it's actually kind of a fun little tease that you can see the box right there, right from the beginning. A couple little platforms to jump around on. I'm actually not entirely certain how to get to that one up there. This normally would just drop you out of where we came out of a second ago. 
Okay, they both drop you out from there. Nothing, nothing crazy going on there. Pretty easy to get up to here. That mountain in the background's even crazier than the one before. Uh, about as simple as a bonus room as you could possibly have, which then just takes you back out again. It literally just has those squiggles in there to be collected. Here's a door I wouldn't have gone in just yet. Our wall jump introduction. Which, does this exist in every version? Now I'm starting to question what is unique to this one or not. I do like the way the subtle cave effect has been kind of applied to the background there. There's some depth and parallax. It actually, it looks really nice. There's a lot of positive things to say about the Fancy Pants Adventures. And one of them has got to be how clean and nice all those backgrounds look. That one star placement has me a little bit baffled. I'm trying to figure out precisely where I can wall jump off of or what to make that work. There's no like, I don't know, ground pound or anything. That narrow little bit seems to be the only way in. And I just for the life of me can't figure it out. You've bested me this round, fancy pants man. I, I got no ideas. The absolute second I left the level, I got a new idea. There's that little cutout in the wall that makes me think that's actually where you get into that room from, and that the thing below is an exit. So now I gotta go hunting around. Oh, there it is. Yep, okay, I, I gotcha. <laughs> it's actually really wild to see World 1 changed in these subtle little ways. Like, there's not a lot changed. But there's just enough that I really have to go poking around in every known corner to see what, if anything, has been changed. And quite a surprising amount has been. Okay, I think I know this little platform. Yep, we've been there. That's the series of little springs we had done to get over to where the box is at. Yeah, I think I'm ready to head on to the next little area. This one has always been exceedingly small. I'll be very curious if this is where they chose to expand things a little bit more. <laughs> they had to find locations to stick those stars. That was a pretty simple one. Hey, they don't even have the moving platforms. I guess they kind of are a pain. Like, you have to wait on them quite often. The timing's a little funky. Uh, yeah, they really didn't change a lot. Added a little roof here. But yeah, the, and then the beautiful, like, icy cave background. That does look really good as well. Oh, not quite 100%. I guess I didn't realize how close I was to achieving it, or else I would have grabbed those extra two squiggles. Oh, look how fancy those fancy pants are. And this level looking pretty similar as well. Let me head down there and give this guy a bonk. Oh, he bonked me. I wasn't prepared for that, but a twist of fate. Gotta get that lone squiggle, now I'm on a mission. Hey, none of the trophies are in this. The ones that you would normally get moving through all of this. Oh, I immediately got distracted because a time trial started. Oh, we got, we got things to climb across. Wall jumps, springs all over the place. This is like pretty chill, but at the same time, there's quite a lot going on here. A lot of, a lot of jumps and sequencing to pull off. Yeah, that was great. That was an awesome little little challenge mixed in there. I enjoyed that. But see, yeah, there's the stars, but we got rid of the trophies. Hmm, is there usually a door there? I feel like there's usually something to jump across to. This seems new. Oh, kind of spider web backgrounds. I like the looks of that. That's nice and clean. Fun variety in the decor of these levels. And it's cool to have done that in a way that maintains the scribbly feeling of everything with even just the platforms being incredibly simplistic and rough around the edges in a very intentional way. Oh, you dang dirty spiders. I'm not even dealing with all that. As squiggles, you're, you're getting left behind. I'm, I just want out of there. I got my star and that's good enough. You though, you're not getting off so easy. Oh, look at that. You can absolutely see beyond the edge of things, which makes me think that they copied this asset directly over from the Flash version, which obviously would have had a narrower resolution, and they forgot to actually widen it out in any way. I'm just gonna do this loop because it's fun. 
Doesn't matter what version of Fancy Pants it is, running around a circle like that is always a good time. Speaking of, I missed a loop. There we go. Oh yeah, that's what it's all about. Wait a second, there's a door over here. What's off to the right? Oh, come on, it really looks like there's something up there, but I don't think there's actually a way to get access to that. Ooh, dimly lit. Leaning a little bit more into the, the cave setting, I guess. Oh, this is fantastic. What is that special lit up squiggle? Is it just a light so you can see around a little more easily? Oh, I had such a good flow going and I got so distracted. I don't think the snails were added until World 2, right? So I kind of appreciate that they found a way to bring something similar into this world without stealing from what would then be introduced in World 2. What the heck? This is entirely new, isn't it? This is a, an entire extra level added, isn't it? As somebody who grew up playing the Flash version and has messed around in the remix and remaster of Fairmount, this is totally new to me. No wonder people were so obsessed with this version of the game. This is such a cool addition. Oh yeah, look at that teamwork with this weird glowy squiggle. Oh, I'm practically Pele. Beckham, those are like the two soccer players I can name. Oh, there's two of them, so I'm less certain I'm actually meant to be bringing them anywhere. A bunch more of these hanging things to jump around on. I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye out for, you know, stars and things. I'm sitting on two. There's only one more to find here. And seemingly this is telling me where to go. Oh no, it, it's directly over there. I can see it. Now I just got to figure out how to get up and over to there. Hit him. Hit him. Oh yeah, that was kind of lame. Oh yeah, but hit both of them. Both of them very non-impactful, very lame <laughs> bits of contact, but still satisfying. Okay, so more up and overs, just like we were doing on that other level. Easy peasy. Very Mario-esque, so I think that's kind of why that instinct exists. Now, what do you think if I just yeet myself over the edge here? Surely not a secret. <laughs> Maybe, though, actually. Where did that just take me? Back to the start of the level? Yep, that's all it is. Just back to the start of the level. Very strange thing to include at the end there. Yeah, the dark setting with the glowing squiggles is a lot of fun. I, I super enjoy that. Down into the pits you go, never to return. And now the moving platform. Okay, so that is familiar, but I think this is still a different level. No, maybe it's just been redesigned, redone. Yeah, I think it was kind of just painted over to fit this ice cave theme rather than the just sort of outdoor-ish setting that it normally turns into. Although maybe that'll still be coming up. That'll be the level three of World 1. Too shy again. What, what is this? It's consistent at least. I'm not even trying to 100% things. I'm just trying to explore. Yeah, okay. Here's the outdoor, more foresty setting. I think the, the detailed backgrounds add a lot because there's just, you know, not a ton going on in this level otherwise. There's the mountains in the background and a huge mountain back there. So I, I wonder if that's supposed to now tie into the fact that you kind of just came from these snowy, icy mountains. I gotta make sure I get down there for that star. It's pretty, pretty simple but effective way to hide one of those. I like the way these squiggles make this tree look like he has a, a face. Just looks kind of unimpressed. Ooh, I, I didn't expect that spring to initiate a, another one of these time trials. Come on, man, don't blow it. Oh, it, 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 it was too slow. Notably too slow. All right, let's make that happen once more now that I kind of know where I need to be heading. You're not on, oh dang it. You're not on a specific timer. Like it's not counting down to zero. If you take too long between squiggles, it aborts and you have to start over. Oh, come on, nearly, nearly, nearly. That's gotta be the one. Whew. Okay, that took a few attempts. So we have a secret door. Oh yeah, the access is still over here. It's just a little bit more hidden. You almost can't avoid it in the original version. Oh, here I'm on a time trial. What the heck, do I just gotta start taking doors? No, maybe every door makes you leave. Oh, that's not how I expected. The timer's still going. So if I just start taking doors, okay, that's that's something. My temptation is to run in a circle in the room and that's clearly not what I need to be doing. There it is. 
Okay, well that was about as uh, simple as it could have been. There weren't really that many different options for me. Nailed it. So keep my eye out. There should be one more star before wrapping up this level. And then I'll be really curious to see what they did with the boss battle, actually. I guess that's maybe where the last star is stashed? Is somewhere as a part of this? Oh, yeah, okay, so there's a whole... Well, one, I like the kind of computer gamer setup that this penguin has. He's also a pirate, I guess, which connects him to the the pirates in the later worlds, maybe? There's squiggle uh, paintings and things around the house, it seems. Just a big fan of those squiggles. Oh, come on, I did the wall jump in a way that let me gain that green squiggle on the other side of the room, so I'm trying to figure out if you can get this one too. Oh, it's so close. I mean, I, I'm kind of suspicious that you have to make the penguin do it. This is really funny. The, the bed disappears at that point, jumping on the penguin like that. And just working on the classic pack, Brad rediscovered that there is an animation for the bed flying into the air. And it's just been missing from like every version of the game except one. And so he's been able to add that back into the classic pack. Exclusive content, even right in world one. I really can't seem to pull this off. Oh, that was so close! My assumption was that I had to jump off the penguin's head, but that doesn't really seem to be working, and so I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just supposed to make the jump? Ah, oh, I really wanted to make it right off the, the introduction to the level. How did I ever do that? And I decided to just knock out the penguin to be done with it and, and kind of have some free attempts. Uh, but now that's very much in my way. <laughs> Uh, it appears it's not going to directly interfere, so I, I do have the freedom to keep trying for it now. Duh! How did I just do it? I just did it so easily! Why can't I do that on this side? Duh, oh, that was so close! There, come on, there it is. Okay, I don't know what that is. You, you can just totally do like this wall run sort of thing, but you can also do this grab and run, and I've done it accidentally. I, I think I've kind of figured it out. Uh, yeah, but anyway, that's the secret. That's what was needed. I got it. Uh, that's another version of World 1 in the bag. I got every star. I got every squiggle for once, so I actually did manage to 100% one section of World 1. The newbie. Oh, look, there's like a, a bonus thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whenever you beat a world in, in this, you have your choice of what unlockable you want to go for. Question mark. It could be anything. It, it's a it's a hat. Yeah, I think it's meant to be kind of like a little parody like link hat maybe. So yeah, there's that version. It's super cool to be able to finally try it out for myself. See what all the fuss is about. Hopefully someday I'll have some friends over or something and I'll be able to play it multiplayer style and get the full experience. Be it dusting off that Xbox, making a live arcade account and busting out that old recording gear just for 30 minutes of footage. YouTube is is just so great sometimes. <laughs> Next up is the mobile version. Another version of this I haven't actually played myself, although I'm pretty sure it is exactly the console version I was just playing. Which makes it all the less worthwhile that I had to install this emulation software, set up visualization on my PC, all just to play something I legitimately just played with worse controls. There's uh, quite a bit of visual glitches going on that could very well be part of the uh, visualization happening. Oh yeah. Oh, Fancy Pants Man has never looked better. Well, this doesn't seem to be going very well. Is that, that's meant to be his hairdo? I guess you could change out hats in this game, so that should be his hair? Very confusing which parts of the uh, the graphics do and don't work in this build. Hair sticking out a mile like Johnny Bravo or something. Accessing one is slightly more difficult. You need 20 stars. I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna watch an ad. Simple as that, we now have access to world one. What is now, now the body's the part that doesn't work, but the hair does? What is, what is going on? The spiders work sometimes, but very infrequently. I don't know what their deal is. What, like, what is going on? with any of this. Well, that's what I get for complaining that 
this was just going to be the exact same version of the game over again. So, so thank you, Broken Emulation Software, for making this a, a fresh new experience for all of us. It's so random, the parts of the character that appear and disappear. I assume it has to do with, like, hitboxes and things, but it's, it's janky. What did I just... Oh, this is another ad. I was like, holy cow, this level's wild and just totally different. No, not a clue what's going on there. It's just more advertising. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll be spending much time in this version of things. There's really not a lot to see. I like the way the mouse pops into existence just to shoot one of his, uh, you know, classic white squares. Kind of reminds you of playing that old ground test way back at the beginning, doesn't it? Oh, this level doesn't get the uh, the special dark setting. I, I guess maybe that's uh, a little bit of an overload on mobile devices or something like that. But yeah, it's a very uh, just generally simplified with less dynamic lighting going on. Otherwise, it appears to be the same level. I'm kind of just ripping through things this time around. Well, I'm glad this exists somewhere that people have an alternate way of playing the Fancy Pants Adventures, even when things like Xbox Live Arcade shut down. And I'm very much assuming that it runs better on mobile devices. I've had no performance issues. Obviously, the visuals are just kind of broken. I tend to look down at mobile platformers or just think a lot of them don't work very well at all. But this one seems pretty well put together. It's nice to have that option available, but I think I've officially seen enough of it. I'm, I'm ready to move on to more properly functioning builds of the game once again, please. I had fully moved on. I was done with this video entirely, and I was hanging out in the Fancy Pants Discord, and there are somehow more versions of World 1 that I wasn't even aware of before. There is an OG version of World 1 Remix that was made available for browsers first of all. The remix takes the original game and sort of breaks it apart and reworks things in fun and surprising new ways. I'm not going to show everything since it's much more clear in the full version. This is pretty good, but compared to the version that came after, the physics are ever so slightly worse. I don't know precisely which version of the engine this is using, but it, it's not quite there yet. And there are paywalled levels. Want to be truly fancy? Buy a key. You'll unlock extra levels with even fancier hats, pants, and the soundtrack. So it was a unique approach to attempting to further monetize these titles while still having them rooted in the browser. So nowadays, this version is, is a little bit worthless since you can't really do a bunch of the stuff present in it. Entering this special key door in the menu, same thing, it's just informing you that there's extra stuff here that you would need to pay for. It's actually interesting that this one still has the option built in to let you do things in full screen, even though things aren't scaled up at a resolution to properly support that, so it's very pixelated in appearance, but it does technically work. There's a funny thing that happens in the level transitions where the UI of the game has been scaled up to fit full screen, but the transition sort of masking layer isn't. So you can just kind of see some edges there that you're obviously not meant to. So I decided to play through things to the end, literally just for completion's sake. But yes, this is effectively the same version that we already know. This is available to play over on Flashpoint entirely for free if you're interested in checking that out for yourself. And then we can move on to what was the full version of the remix. Using a brand new engine made in Action Script 3, whereas the previous games had been made using 2. So visually, a lot of things are going to be very, very familiar looking, but it'll be nice full widescreen support. You can see very, very smooth animation and movement. Fancy Pants Man feels fast and slick, and controlling him is just as smooth as you could ever want. There are all sorts of new additions and things to shake things up and make World 1 feel a little bigger, a little more exciting. There's legit fancy skateboarding for this special little segment, which is just crazy fun, uh, even though I managed to get quite stuck for a moment. It's okay, just build up a bit of speed and get things going again. It makes me feel like I'm playing with like, I don't know, a tech deck or something, but like the ideal version of that, like exactly what I would want 
that to feel like. It's it's just my imagination brought to life in the, the best possible way. I love that section. It's so small. I, I would love to see more fancy skateboarding brought to the series at some point. I suppose the new music for this world is actually a, a quite a substantial change. It's just very, very different than what we've had before. The fancy box design is a little bit different. There's a, there's a stripe on it now that I don't think was there before. Fancy seeing you down here again. You know the drill by now. I give you the wall jump. You escape the evil rising ink. What? You already have it? There's an original and a remix box? This is getting complicated. It's only now getting complicated, Brad. I swear it had been complicated for five years already by the time this came out. So this level itself should also be very slightly tweaked. The spring right at the end kind of just smashes you into the wall and it sends you off into an entirely new sequence. There's these collapsing platforms and shifting ground below you. You're slowly kind of making your way up while the ink comes down below to meet you. It's really fantastic. I really love it. It, it reminds me of sort of the... Uh, the level variety and action that we saw in Donkey Kong Country Returns, or just in general the Donkey Kong Country series, which is really cool to see that brought about. And by completing that, you get striped pants, and just in general, I've, I've already been playing this for a while, entirely separately, I did like a Let's Play on it years ago. I, I have access to a bunch of these different unlocks and things that I, I believe come straight from the console game. I quite like the polka dot pants. I kind of would like to go back to having nothing, but I, I guess I'm I guess I'm doing polka dots. There are little things hidden around where you would gain access to additional hats, pants, colors, what have you. That's been scattered all throughout the level now. This is a big major addition. There's a bowling ball hidden up here. It'll blast its way through the spiders and crack open an entirely new access point for you. So there's lots of fun, cool ways that World 1 has been kept the same, small and simple, but then added to, expanded, and reimagined in some really unique and interesting ways. So we'd better go check that out first, quickly slide our way down. There's a spring, bunch of squiggles to go check out, and a little wall jumping section that takes you to this entirely new area, which I love the way that that's always been there and always looked and felt like it would be something new and different you could go check out, but you couldn't actually ever get to before, so I think the way that that was tied in and made use of is really clever. Really tight platforming sequence, lots of uh, moving blocks going around, you get a new pants pattern, and it takes you back around to where you already are familiar with. These platforms are actually sliding around and moving in, in the remix, and not only that, it actually adds an entire new section to this, a bunch more verticality to, to jump and run your way around. So I love that all of this wasn't even redone and reimagined in a way that is identical to how it was done in the console version. It's, it's entirely its own thing. Which is so crazy that these games have been redone so many times and continue to be different each time. This spring sequence uh, is a little bit more complicated. There's now these moving wall jumps to go along with as well, but it's very short and, and generally familiar. The spider jumping sequence remains in place, made slightly more complex, a little more challenging. Managed to blow it right at the end, not the challenging part. Second time's the charm, there, there we go. <laughs> There's an entirely new side room with a brand new challenge, which introduces a new obstacle type. I don't even know how to describe these fourth dimensional spikes. Really puts your overall dodging and aerial control into practice. A little bit of uh, wall jumping, chain together a few things, gotta shoot those gaps, very narrow. But luckily the controls are so polished at this point in the series that it actually just feels like a dream to dodge through that. It's, it's challenging, but it's still simple because you just, it, the movement just feels incredible at this point in the series. Onward and upward to level three, which is one of the simplest levels. The moving platforms in this section have been made a little bit more complex, otherwise it's uh, pretty well untouched. But then we're up to level 3. Meh, nobody liked level 3. 
At which point, Brad is introduced as a part of this world, acting as the pencil, the, the creator of the series, manually changing things on the fly as you're playing it. It's, it's a clever little way to, to tie together the storybook nature of Fancy Pants that has always been present, and now we suddenly have like a real in-game inclusion of that. And so it, it's fun. It's fun to make Brad a part of the gameplay. Which then drops us into an entirely new level, something that was never previously a part of World 1. There's a new sequence where he's, he's sort of drawing uh, the platforms for you as you're running through things, so you, you just have a, a fun little bit of sliding and platforming to rip through. Nothing tricky, just kind of a fun playground feel to it. You're cut off and pushed down into another unique level, and from there, there's this fun little springboard that takes you up to an entirely new challenge. It's interesting seeing ways in which Brad maintained the scribbly art style of the levels in this world, but managed to do it in, in new and interesting ways. We had that bright blue a second ago, and now we have this grayscale area that feels like its own thing yet again. So there's lots of uh, squiggles to find and kick loose here. I actually don't know if there's uh, some unique pants or anything to find. There must be. But if there is, I think I missed them. You can see there's kind of a, an alternate little path down here to go and explore. Uh, an entirely separate spring. Uh, I just pops you back up. Okay, it's not, not a new area. I was in, incorrect. Gotta build up a lot of speed there. Time to jump just right. So much of this is so different and there's so much additional space to be explored. I guess maybe I won't show every possible new corner of it since it's entirely new and different. You might just want to go see it all for yourself. I actually really, really love this extra side area though. It's just cool to have such dramatic stylistic change-ups. Like, it's, it's just fun and I, I feel like as a series, there's a lot of room for Fancy Pants to play around with it because it's a, a series based in being an artist and expressing creativity and, and themes like that. So it, it's really, really awesome to see stuff like this. I absolutely love this level. At the end, we end up in one more sketched out area. It kind of has this sort of intentionally incomplete feel and then it starts being drawn right in front of you again. The pencil directly telling us where to go. It's a much more engaging and interesting battle overall than the one <laughs> against the angry penguin. The pencil will start drawing in spiders. You have to stomp them and kick them into the pencil. Then you have the opportunity to kick the pencil and break the lead, at which point it needs to be sharpened, it's a little bit shorter, and you work your way through the boss like that. Holy, oh, that was coming in fast. I, I kind of can't believe I got that in time. <laughs> and with that, you've broken it down into the tiny little usable pencil, which is the introduction of Fancy Pants actually having a weapon to attack with. Now, this is a point in time where we're maybe splitting hairs a little bit, but these games do exist through the arcade in Super Fancy Pants Adventure. And honestly, I'm not sure if I will play through it again at this point. The only differences here, other than running in the new revised Super Engine, is that there are a few slightly different hats to be unlocked, which hats specifically they are, where or how they're unlocked. There's a slightly different variety of pants colors available. And you have the ability to fight with the pen that is very specific to Super Fancy Pants Adventures. But at this point, it's really, it's it's starting to be a lot. <laughs> so yeah, as fun, enjoyable, smooth as this all feels, I've been doing quite a lot of it already, and I think I'll just leave this one as is. I guess I'll have to title the video th that I play X number of different versions of World 1, not that I complete every single one. The sheer quantity of separate variations of this world is out of control, but we sincerely hope that the classic pack version will come to be seen as the definitive way to experience all of this. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's enough. I, I'm glad I managed to squeeze it in if it is technically different in any way, even if I failed to show off the specific ways in which it's different. 
you guys are gonna have to take my word for it the same way that I'm taking people in the Discord's <laughs> word for it. I've I've lost track and I, I don't know how anyone could possibly remember at what point which things belong to which version. But I can also use this opportunity to talk further about Fancy Pants at Large. Because as of today, Two Left Thumbs has taken over as publisher for Super Fancy Pants Adventure. The main benefit is that the two games can be bundled together for some additional discounts. If you already own Super, please check out the bundle as you will get a discount on the Classic Pack without having to rebuy Super. So I definitely want to make sure that is known. The focus is going to remain on the Classic Pack for the time being, but I've made a news post over on the Steam page, and I'm hoping to breathe a bit of new life into Super for a new era of fancy pants. So the remix is the same game you know with a new engine, then tweaked and reworked, expanded to make that much more interesting. Because let's face it, the original version of the game is small. It was only meant to be a small time killer played online. So this enhanced and expanded remixed version is, is very welcome. And then, just in 2020, we had the introduction of the Fancy Pants Adventures World 1 Remaster. That can be accessed directly from the menu here. Now, this is effectively the version of things you'll totally already know. It is the traditional World 1 brought up to the standard of Super Fancy Pants Adventure, but none of the layouts or anything like that have really been touched. With the addition of the QD Chronicles, a series of diary notes being left behind by your sister Cutie Pants that you can then discover and read through in your playthrough. Otherwise, the levels are exactly as you remember them. There aren't any crazy new expansions, twists, or changes on that formula. You know, no bowling balls, anything like that to go breaking any walls down. This level now includes this strange little interaction, I don't know, this thing on the podium that then has some sort of gag related to Brad Bourne's voicemail box. I I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. So as fun as it is to revisit this and, and play it with the hyper smooth controls and general updated widescreen features, I would say I think the remix is probably my favorite version of World 1. Now that I've experienced it, the console version is, is quite high up there too. I thought that was really, really well done. But it is awesome to be able to play this world with a polished modern engine, experiencing these old levels without any crazy updates or reworks. So everywhere that there would normally have been a trophy, there are now pages in the Cutie Chronicles. All the familiar, untouched levels, things are pretty well exactly as you'd remember them. And it even includes the angry penguin fight, so there is still a means of playing that. And way, way more detailed visuals and animations have been added to the penguin, which look really great. It was always a shame that this character didn't have the same care put into it with the frame-by-frame -frame animation seen elsewhere. I could understand why not but it's very much appreciated that it's here now. So pretty straightforward, but I left out one critically different, important, amazing new thing that's included in this remaster is the ability to switch to and play as Cutie Pants. She actually plays quite differently. I, I believe her momentum and speed are a little bit different. The jump is a little different. She doesn't actually have a slide ability of her own. And instead of stomping baddies, can actually ride around on them instead. So you just get this happy little spider friend. I don't know, go wandering up the hill together seems fun. And when you jump off, you kind of squish them, but you don't actually get rid of them. And while you're airborne, Cutie Pants has the extra ability to bring forth her trusty cat, Caboodle. <laughs> And you know, when you use somewhere that actually has a roof, Kabuta will grab hold and you can swing around through that. You know, it, it's a cat, kitten, kitten, Kaboodle, kitten, Kaboodle, kitten, Kaboodle. It's, it's a great little gag. I love that name. And I'm pretty sure it's actually named after a real life cat of Brad and Gina's. I'm, I'm only a little bit sure of that. I'm not entirely positive. Yeah, that's one way to get around that. <laughs> So obviously, all of this was made without this additional uh, character in mind, so 
how precisely you move around in and navigate all of this is, is a little tricky, but I think it's done in a way where the ink actually rises more slowly, so it's it's a little forgiving on you because it's a, a little harder, but overall it's, it's not too crazy, and once you get the hang of it, that swinging is a really fun change up. And yes, she can ride the, the mice as well, but you can't actually go anywhere with them. There's, there's not much to that. <laughs> I'm actually so accustomed to running and jumping and sliding and, and continually shifting and changing my momentum that I, I kind of didn't really think about the fact that the overall navigation and movement in this game could be so much simpler. I, I guess it harkens back to the original version of, of this world and this game. But even without a super advanced moveset, you can still navigate these levels quite easily. And it's, it's funny in the way that it starts to begin to feel more like your average platformer when you don't have that flexibility and, and freedom of movement at hand. So I really hope if someday Brad decides to make QD a more prominent part of this game or series, that either the levels are further modified to make better use of Caboodle, or to give Cutie her own set of unique challenges that very specifically make use of that swinging mechanic. I'm using it there just because there happened to be a low <laughs> roof. The penguin battle is as straightforward as ever. You don't have to do anything fancy, pardon the pun, rather unintentional, to, to get through it. You can buy the World 1 Remix and Remaster together over on itch.io and they will be made quite a prominent part of the Fancy Pants Classic Pack. So if you prefer to own it on Steam, that's going to be your best bet. It's been a long, long wait, but this brings us all the way around to the World 1 in the Fancy Pants Adventures Classic Pack. It may be hard to appreciate what is going on here, as it's going to look very similar to what you've now just seen over and over again before. But this is the original Fancy Pants Adventures World 1, probably more accurately that 1.7 version, redone to have that full screen support and 60 frames per second visuals, but to not actually have the enhanced engine and revised move sets and everything that were introduced in later versions of the game. This is meant to recreate that Fancy Pants experience as you remember it. So it's very true to the feel of the originals. Brad is going into the original Flash files and making these games work. That's part of the complexity of the classic pack and why things really fell apart at, you know, that two yard line is all the difficulties surrounding making Flash work on this scale and having a wide variety of these fancy pants engines all talking to each other, seamlessly switching between them. And when Brad went through the process of updating things for the classic pack, he very quickly realized that Fancy Pants Man's animations really didn't hold up. As soon as you scale things up to 60 frames per second, it just kind of looks and feels quite off. So he actually had to do new animations for these old, old games, done in a way that recreated the look and feel he had originally done 18 years ago. So we wanted to make sure these classic versions of these games were available, even though they're still updated and enhanced just for modern quality of life purposes. Like to remind you, this is what this would normally look like. <laughs> But it's no bells and whistles. This is, this is straight up. It's a way of experiencing those original games that hasn't previously existed and can exist alongside the remaster and the remix as a nice way of looking back at what these games were, even if it isn't literally precisely exactly what they were before. The classic pack will also have classic versions of World 2 and 3, and at least a remaster of World 2. World 3 we're still determining, since it's such an updated, different experience from World 1 and 2. It may not need a remaster in the same way. But that's also why this is getting released in early access, is we want community feedback. We want the fans to have their voices heard to share what they would like to see this pack become. But as a starting point, day one, you will have access to three different versions of World 1 and some work-in-progress builds of World 2. 
Like, for example, these weird dragon bird things. I don't know what they're called or what their deal is. Way back when Brad made a Flappy Bird light game that makes use of them. It's not there yet, but at some point, we will be adding that to the Fancy Pants Classic Pack. Because why not? Might as well just have everything all in one place. Hey, would you look at that? The bed! The bed actually flies away! There you go, you can see what that penguin looked like again without the highly detailed animation. Just just not quite the same, is it? Uh, so I'm recording this <laughs> in a very uh, late, last minute build of these games as they're being brought back together. As I'm sure many of you saw, there were some launch delays coming up to release. This, this is why. This is an example of why. <laughs> While World 1 is quite simple and most things work as intended, this type of hard crash or soft lock was not uncommon and we really couldn't release the game with this level of bugs in place. If you go buy it now today, I'm sure there will be a few bugs, but Brad has been knocking them out like crazy, it's only going to get better from here. And we're quite confident that the worst of the crashes and bugs have already been ironed out. And not content with offering various versions of these original worlds, all sorts of bonus content and bonus features, Brad thought that the number one way he could add value to the classic pack and make it feel worthwhile over just playing the free Flash games, which remain available, or playing any of the many pre-existing versions of these games at this point, he decided he wanted to add entirely new levels which is where the introduction of the back pages comes from. These are levels that exist between worlds, tying things together in creative new ways, making use of updated engines and visuals to offer up experiences that are wholly unique to the classic pack. So that's a very early tease of what that's gonna look like. We have our first look at what the World 2 remaster will look like. So those are just nice early teases of what's to come that will make that price tag hopefully feel notably more worthwhile. So with that, I believe I have played every unique version of these worlds in known existence. If I've missed any, you're gonna have to let me know. I'll, I'll be disappointed though, that'll be a letdown. The classic pack is available to buy in early access right now. There'll be links down below. If you're excited about supporting old school Flash devs and these classic titles, Please also consider checking out the William and Sly Classic Collection. That one has far less spells and whistles and updates, it's simply a free title. And you can wishlist the upcoming William and Sly releasing this spring. That would actually help us out immensely. That game has slowly been building up the wishlists, but we would like to take it a lot further before release. So that, that would just be so, so deeply appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for letting me be a part of the Fancy Pants Adventures. It truly is one of my greatest honors. I, I can't express how much it means to me to, to play this role and to help fans old and new discover these games. I'm looking forward to many, many more fancy years to come. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.